Hi everyone, I'm here with Perna Vergi, Senior Manager of Global Engagement at Microsoft, and today we're chatting all about artificial intelligence in marketing and its effect on PPC. Perna, welcome. Hi Jennifer, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for your time today. Um, how has your week been so far? My week's been great. Uh, we've adopted a puppy a few days ago, so oh. lots of cleaning up and lots of spraying of the no, box spray, uh, no biting spray everywhere. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I have lots of electrical wires and nice shoes that have go gotten chewed up. <laughs> oh, no. What kind of puppy did you get? Uh, he's a yellow lab and super adorable, but of course, teething. So everything is a victim of biting. Yeah. What did you name him? Uh, my son named him Peanut Butter. So PB for oh. short. PB. He's, got, he's got a little brown streak on his back. So my son was like, looks like Peanut Butter. <laughs> <laughs> <That's really cute. laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you don't have too much cleaning up to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll save that for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first off, you've been on the record saying uh, that you're firmly on the side that AI is going to be amazing for marketers. So what do you imagine the day-to-day -day life of a marketer will look like in the future with access to exciting AI? Like you grab your morning coffee, you log into your computer, and then, and then what? And then you'll be getting all kinds of wonderful notifications about performance and new insights and um, new ideas for engaging with your audience. I think AI for us solves some of our biggest problems. And some of our problems include around, you know, engaging with our audience in this world filled with distractions. Like how do you find the right way to cut through the noise and get through? And that's where AI is super helpful because A, it can analyze all of the different data and touch points to see what's working, what's not working. It can help us get really good at personalization and engaging with people in, in the way that they would like to be engaged with. And it also gives us new interfaces. So things like chatbots or digital assistants, as well as virtual reality. So if I may tempt somebody through a chatbot to come in and look at hey, the latest collection of shoes, then I could just put on my HoloLens and take a look at a 3D hologram in front of me of all the latest styles of shoes. So it's really cool ways to engage with, with brands and with people in a very seamless manner. That's very cool. We're going from banner ads <laughs> to trying on virtual shoes, hey? Oh, I know, and oh, how fun is that? Yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're speaking at Unbounce's Marketing Optimization Week, February 21st, on how to prepare for AI's emerging role in marketing. Uh, and I know that you'll be sharing three things that everyone can do now to prepare. Uh, but as a preview, can you share one of those things that all of us marketers can prepare for? Yes, I think one of the things that marketers can read really you prepare is to A, understand what AI can do for us and try to touch the waters a little bit more with a, a chatbot. So I have people giving people some tips on how they can incorporate a chatbot within search. For example, Bing offers um, a Bing conversational bot right in the SERPs itself. So I'll give people some tips on, hey, how can you set it up? And B, what's the strategy you can use for your bot? Mm -hmm. And chatbots are very hot right now. It's because they're so easy and convenient, right? You're using a platform that you're already familiar with, whether it's Skype or Facebook Messenger or Kik or whatever platform that you use to talk to your friends. And it's very seamless. I can just in that same platform that I use to talk to my friends, I can order my pizza or engage, check on the status of my order or, or do anything that I need to with a brand just in that same place. There's no multiple hops that need to happen. Mm -hmm. And it does seem like customers or consumers on the other side it just chat is very natural and it's how we already mm -hmm. kind of go about our world so it just seems like as you said very seamless yeah conversation is the first thing we learn right from from babies to now arguing over who's going to take the trash out it's still conversation it's the forefront of all of our lives yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> very cool um, so as you know, here at Unbounce, we're a conversion platform for marketers, and many of our customers pair landing pages with PPC in social or search, right? So mm -hmm. ads. Um, how do you see AI impacting pay-per-click the most in the next few years? 
Um, so I think AI will have a couple of different roles. The first one is it's going to make it easier to hone into the right person. We're already seeing some signs of this with our much more advanced audience targeting, such as in-market audiences, which lets you slice and dice audiences based on people who are more likely to buy. So it's going to be in reaching the right person at the right time. And B, it's going to help us take a lot of the effort and pain out of the administrative side. And we saw this with bid, mod, uh, bid automations and things like that that came in mm -hmm. that reduced the time that people took. So it'll make things like reporting a lot easier. It'll make keyword research a lot easier. So it's all of those, anything that is very much of a repetitive task mm -hmm. can get automated and then can be improved by AI to make life easier. Sounds good. Sounds like a lot of time saving. Yes. Time savings and more effective ads. I think it's win-win for all. That sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's sort of like um, we hear some marketers kind of demonize AI or, or they think of it as sort of like this ex machina. I don't know if I'm saying that <laughs> right. <laughs> they see it in a very detrimental way, but you mm -hmm. don't believe that at all, hey? I don't think so. I, I am really, I think that the way AI is being designed and actually the way that companies who are creating, companies like Microsoft or Google or IBM, who are the forefront of creating AI, I think the responsibility is on, on people like us to infuse the technology with, to, to respect the human. And I mean, that's one of the pillars that we are building our AI on, that it is respectful to the human. It is there to just augment we can, what we can do. It's not there to, to replace us or destroy us or anything like that. All it's doing is taking what we are good at and giving us a, a little superpower. So it's like wearing a little jetpack so you can run faster or fly faster. So that's all that it is doing. And if you think about it in that way, then it's giving us gifts that we could not have access to before. I love that, the jetpack. Who doesn't yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Um, so you're no stranger to setting up AdWords or Bing campaigns. Um, so what is like a little known technique that any man, anybody managing paid spend can do today for more impact with their PPC ads? I think there's, um, there's two things. The first one is make sure you're implementing in-market audiences. That is, I think, if people had to ask me, like, what's one tip for success for 2018? I'm a big believer in the power of in-market audiences. We've actually seen, it's still in pilot, it's an open beta, so anyone can actually sign up and be a part of it. It's not, um, it's not live, but you can test it. And in, throughout the testing period, we've seen such amazing results from a lot of different people. Because what it allows you to do is reach an audience that is in the market or looking to buy the specific product or service that you're selling. We have over 120 different categories. So if you just layer them on into your existing ad groups or campaigns and then just adjust the bids accordingly, then you have a much uh, better chance of reaching people who are interested in what you sell but may not know who you are. Mm. takes the mystery out of it, doesn't it? Yes, it does, because you're just reaching this very highly qualified audience. If you can do that and then combine it with the wonderful landing page learnings that you get from your Unbound store, I think that that's a really win-win solution. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so we also know that voice search is going to have a much bigger role to play with Gardner predicting that by 2020, 30% of all web browsing uh, sessions will be screenless. Yes. Um, so that's definitely different, right? Um, what should PPCers be thinking about to prepare for voice search? Um, so again, um, it's a really good question because we are seeing voice being adopted more and more at increasing rates. Um, if we looked at Mary Meeker's internet study, then you know she shared that, uh, for example, Google says 20% of their mobile traffic is voice now mm -hmm. because voice is easy. So I would say uh, PPC marketers should think about the differences or what's unique to voice. A, it tends to be much more local. So especially if you're running local campaigns, you want to think about what are the queries that would relate to your business that people may want to ask if they're in a hurry or on the go. The second thing that all marketers, not just PPC, but SEOs as well, is think about are we providing the right information? Do we have some sort of structured data or sort of, for example, schema markup that can give the search engine much more insights into understanding what the page or the information is about? Um, the other thing we can do is look at the keywords. 
the voice is of course more conversational and with conversational queries we tend to have longer phrases we're much more clear in the intent so if you can look at testing some of the most common like broader um, phrases or questions that get asked and actually test adding them in as keywords and see what could be the right way to answer it and get really drilled down in the old days what we would do over in the old days which is like what last year <laughs> what we would do was you'd go i I'd look for shoes or I'd look for like you know women's sandals and i'd go to the website then i'd select down by color and size and width and everything right we would do that selections but now with voice, you self-select in the query itself. I can just say like, show me blue strappy summer sandals in size eight. And I want to see it because you can see it in the query. Yeah. So if I then had to go to the website and do the selections again, I'd be quite annoyed. But I, if I got to a page that showed just what I was looking for, mm -hmm. it's making it really seamless for the customer. Mm -hmm. Just more granularity there. And we have to sort of prepare for that on, on page. Mm -hmm. Exactly on page as well, which is why to look at some of the different landing page options that you have. It's like, are we answering the right question in the right way? Mm -hmm. um, speaking of landing pages for PPC, I'm sure you've seen dozens. Um, what do you think is maybe the biggest mistake people are making when creating landing pages to pair up with their search ads? It's just, it's not being specific enough. If they're looking for something and your ad promises something, does your page deliver on that promise? So if I'm, to, if I'm doing a, a search for waterproof digital cameras, and then I, I see an ad that talks about waterproof digital cameras on sale, and then I go on your landing page and it's just all your digital cameras, again, it's, you're giving the, the searcher more work to do. So you want to make life as easy as possible. So try to think about that, answer the right questions, and don't go too broad. Like yes, the temptation, especially with some of the, the newbie PPC marketers or some of the people first trying it out is, let's just send everybody to the homepage. And as you know, that that's, that's not going to work and they'll realize that soon. Yeah, you definitely need a more focused CTA than sending people to your homepage where there's just too much going on. It's more uh -huh. fab, it's more for organic. It's not, with paid, you just have the option to really choose versus having Google or Bing choose for you. Yes. Uh, just organic's whole deal, right? So yeah, I agree. It's, it's definitely that specificity really, really helps from ad to landing page. And what you said, the call to action, and that's where a lot of even salespeople sometimes fail. It's like you don't ask for exactly what you want them to do. So making sure that you do that um, is a huge advantage. Big time, big time. Um, Perna, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. This was awesome to learn more about how AI is going to impact PPC. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Awesome. Uh, we'll see you at uh, Marketing Optimization Week this February. Looking forward to it. See your session soon.